Hey, Andy here from buildahottub.com. In this video, I'm gonna talk about everything you need to know about flow-through heaters. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so on this channel, I've certainly covered lots about alternative heating sources, things like air source heat pumps and heat exchangers, but I realized I haven't done a deep dive on the good old fashioned, I'll call it old fashioned, but the more commonly found in uh, hot tubs than, than any other heating method are the regular electric flow through heater. So in this video, I'm gonna try and cover everything that you'll need to know about the electric flow through heater. Now, before I do that, it's always a great opportunity to say you know what's coming next. Please do subscribe to the channel, hit that notification icon to be notified when my videos go live. I do two long form videos just like this every single week, a whole bunch of shorts and everything on this channel focuses on DIY hot tubs, plunge pools, hot tub parts, and pretty much everything in between. Okay, so what is a flow-through heater? Well, this is an example of a flow-through heater, and also this is an example of a flow-through heater. Basically, a flow-through heater comprises of four different parts, and depending on how this is gonna be connected to your system is, is how these are, are gonna work. So the first part is the heating element. The second part, is the housing, the third is a pressure switch, and the fourth is a sensor. Now those sensors could be for temperature, which is normally what they are on these units. Now, as I said, they can look very different. I've shown you two types of flow-through heater already. This one is a type of flow-through heater that you would commonly find in a spa pack. So it would connect up to the, the brains of the hot tub, if you like, which is the spa pack. You would get them power from the unit to power the heater. You would then plug in the sensors so that the spa pack could read the temperature and that flow sensor would be in there as well to tell the spa pack that there was water flowing through the heater. Now, in a unit that looks something like this, you can see that it's got a regular plug on it. So you can plug that into an outlet. This is more of a standalone flow through heater. Now, both of these units actually work in exactly the same way. So. The circulation pump will turn on on your hot tub. It will send water through the system. So it will draw the water from the hot tub. It will then send it through the heater. As the water moves through the heater, the flow switch will be triggered. So that tells either the heater or the spa pack that there's water going through the heater. The element will then receive current from either the spa pack or from a regular outlet. The element will then heat up. The water will then pass through the tube, absorbing the heat from the element and will then register on the temperature sensor how hot the actual water is. And this is a continuous process. It's pretty straightforward. This isn't rocket science and I'm pretty certain I won't have lost anybody at this stage of the video. Now, as the element is powered by AC current, it is not polarity sensitive, so you just gonna connect it to two hot terminals and it will then heat up. The flow switch inside of the unit, you should be able to reach in with your finger and actually press the, the switch and hear a click, and that will then tell you that the switch is in good working order because if the unit cannot tell that there is water flowing through, it will not allow current to go to the element, it won't allow the element to heat up, and your hot tub won't heat either. So the process is pretty straightforward, but you've gotta make sure that firstly, the heater has power, and secondly, that flow switch is actually working because it's really there as a safety method. You, you wouldn't want the element to continually heat without water flowing through it. It would be very dangerous indeed. So what are the benefits of flow through heaters? Well, firstly, they're really simple to fit. You've got a couple of unions on either side. They connect to your pipework and they allow you to basically remove the, the tube, uh, inspect the element, change it if needed, but it's very easy to, to screw into the hot tub plumbing. Secondly, they're pretty durable. There's not a great deal that can actually go wrong with these flow through heaters. It's normally the element or the flow switch or the temperature sensor that, that actually fails. So three out of those four components that I mentioned earlier are, are the only things that you really need to look at if your flow through heater is not performing how you would expect. 
They can be particularly resistant to corrosion and more so if you've opted for a titanium element, which again is very easy to switch out. So if you're going for a salt system, for example, it's highly corrosive. You're gonna to want to have that titanium element just so that your heating will actually last for, for any kind of length of time in that uh, very corrosive environment. And lastly, there's also minimum maintenance. There's not a great deal that you need to do for a flow through heater to keep it in good working order. As I said, if there's a problem, you can normally change out the element. It's a 10 to 15 minute job, a couple of nut, nuts and bolts that need to be removed. It's really straightforward and, and anyone with uh, competent DIY skills can definitely do that. So when do you need to replace your flow through heater? Well, I would definitely say replace the element if you are adding a salt system into your hot tub, so it's gonna be very corrosive. You wanna replace that regular element with a titanium one, just so it lasts uh, a lot longer. Secondly, if you wanna replace them if, for example, you've identified your heater is tripping your breaker. It's nine times out of 10 the element that actually causes this, because over time, the element breaks down and instead of actually heating up, it just shorts out. So that's what causes it to actually trip your breaker. So at that point, it's a good opportunity to, to change the element, put a titanium one in so it's gonna last a little bit longer. They're not that much more expensive than the regular ones. It's certainly worth the extra 20 or $30 because it will last an awful lot longer. And finally, if you are seeing any error codes or inconsistent heating, then it's probably time to change the, the element or the flow through heater itself. Both are very simple to do and are not gonna give a competent DIYer much hassle at all. Now I'm gonna finish with the downsides of flow through heaters, and that's really down to the amount of time that they actually take to, to heat up the water. Electric heaters are by far the slowest means of heating your hot tubs. If you're looking for something fast, then you're really gonna to want to look at gas or propane. They are by far the fastest heating methods. And unfortunately, the electric flow through heaters are by far the slowest. So hopefully this short video on flow through heaters you found useful. As always, I appreciate the view. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video. If you've liked this video, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next video.